children in today's chess video i'm going to be showing you a chess game that was played by magnus carlsen versus ernst pick magnus carlsen who's playing from the white pieces opens the game with the move pawn to e4 the king's pawn opening is on the board and pawn to c6 the caracan defense white replies with the move pawn to d4 and now black strikes in the center with the move pawn to d5 knight to c3 so white is developing the knight and at the same time defending the pawn on e4 black trades once d captures e4 and now knight captures c4 bishop to f5 knight to g3 so white has removed the knight from g3 and is attacking this bishop on f5 bishop to g6 and h4 immediately so what is the idea behind h4 why is white wasting time well if you play the move knight d7 then after h5 bishop to f5 knight captures f5 um let's say queen to a5 check c3 queen captures f5 already white has a lead in development let's say knight to f3 bishop to d3 is coming very soon so this would be a very good advantage for white so obviously black decides to make breeding room after h4 he simply plays the move pawn to h6 and now if you play h5 then he will play bishop to h7 so now white does not play h5 for the time being instead he simply develops the knight with knight to f3 knight e7 and now h5 so white is simply attacking this bishop on g6 and bishop to h7 bishop to d3 and this is a very common idea in the caracan defense black trades bishop captures d3 and after queen captures d3 you might think what has white gained and what has black lost well for black has simply developed the bishop to f5 and then he went back to g6 and then he went back to h7 and he has wasted three moves by simply developing his bishops but after this move bishop to d3 white has once again gained that bishop so black has literally wasted four moves for nothing okay black simply develops pawn to e6 and now bishop to f4 if you play a move like c3 then bishop to d6 is already coming i putting pressure on this g3 knight so now after bishop to f4 black is simply not allowed to play bishop to d6 knight to f6 and now queen side castle so white has revealed its intentions and now he wants to attack with knight to e5 knight to e2 and g4 and after queen side castle bishop to e7 knight to e4 and queen to a5 so black is putting pressure on this a2 pawn white defends king to b1 and castles knight captures f6 knight captures f6 and here knight to e5 is played so what is the idea behind knight to e5 so white has gained a rock solid knight outpost on e5 and now he wants to play g4 bring his rook to g1 and after g5 he will simply crush black's king After knight to e5, rook a d8, black must go for the counterplay and queen to e2. A very useful move. For example, if you play g4, then already black has some ideas of playing c5. So queen to e2 was played and c5. So black is simply trying to create some counterplay in the center. And in this position, Magnus Carlsen simply plays a move knight to g6. And this is a very cunning tactical idea. If you play rook f8 simply ignoring the knight then after knight captures c7 rook captures c7 you win a pawn with d captures c5 what is the idea if you play rook captures rook captures and queen captures c5 white simply gains the exchange with bishop to d6 and now there is no defense against the rook and the queen black must part with this rook so after knight g6 ernst speak considered all this and he decided to capture the knight on g6 knight captures g6 was played by black and queen captures e6 so white is simply gaining a pawn and is giving a check to the king so you cannot play rook f7 because after h captures g6 you cannot defend the rook on f7 so king to h8 was played note that you cannot play king to h7 because after h takes g6 king takes g6 rook to d3 and let's say c captures d4 rook to g3 king to h7 and rook captures h6 g captures h6 
queen capture c7 and after king to h8 queen to g7 is a checkmate so you cannot play king to h7 because then white simply plays h captures g6 so black decides to go with the move king to h8 h captures g6 and this was Black's idea. Now he plays the move knight to g8, and you might be asking, what is the point? Well, first of all, he's defending the h6 pawn and he's defending this bishop on e7. So after knight to g8, pause the video for a few minutes and try to consider the best connect continuation for white. Well, after knight to g8, our only counterplay for a piece. Is the attack so white simply plays bishop captures h6 and this is the idea. Black decided to go for g captures h6, but if you play knight captures h6, you think everything is all right. But after rook captures h6, g captures h6, and queen captures c7, there is no defense to queen to h7 checkmate whatsoever. Black has two rooks and one queen, but these do not defend the black king. At the end of the day, so this would be a completely winning position for white. So after bishop takes h6, g takes h6, and now white simply decides to part with his rook. Rook captures h6. The idea is, if you play king g7, then rook to h7 is a checkmate. So black decides to go for knight captures h6 and queen captures c7. But this is different because black simply has a knight. Black defends with knight to f7. Okay, g captures h7, and the idea is, let's say if you play a move like rook captures d4, then you play queen to f6 check, king h7, rook h1 check, rook h4, and rook captures h4 is a checkmate. So after g captures h7, black plays the only move in the position, which is king to g7. Rook to d3, so white wants to maneuver the rook to g3 and then he will give a checkmate. And in this position, this is a completely winning position for white, but black does not give up so early. He tries to trick Magnus Carlsen with the move rook to d6. And you might think, he's giving up a free rook. We can simply play queen captures d6 and rook to g3 is threatened. But even in totally winning positions, you must consider the opportunities of your opponent and black has an opportunity with queen to e1 giving a check. So after rook to d1, queen captures d1 is a beautiful back rank checkmate. So even at positions where everything is going right for you, you must be careful. So after rook to d6, white decides to go for rook to g3 check. Rook to g6, so black defends the rooks check to the king and queen to e5 check. And you might ask, what is the idea? So black plays the move king captures f7. But what happens if you play king h7? Queen h5 check, rook h6 and the idea is queen to f5 check, king to h8, queen to e5 check, king to h7 and queen to g7 is once again a beautiful checkmate. So in this position, after queen to e5 check, black decides to go for king captures f7 and queen to f5 check. So our normal defensive move would be to play rook to f6 and this is what ends take place. Pause the video for a few seconds and try to come up with the correct winning response for white. Well, after rook to f6, you don't need to think for so long. Queen to d7 is a checkmate because this two rooks are not defending the black queen. Instead, these two rooks are simply taking away the king's escape squares to f6 and f8 respectively. So after queen to d7, you cannot go to the g file because the rook is guarding this file and you cannot go to e8, e7, e6 either because the queen is once again covering those squares. But let's go back. What happens if you play king to e8? Well, once again, you don't play rook captures g6 because of queen to e1 checkmate. I hope you saw those. But after queen to f5 check, king to e8, queen captures g6 is a check and this is a winning position for white. He can simply play c3, rook to e3 and a very easy position for white to convert. So after queen to f5 check, king to e7 and rook to e3 check. King to d8, queen captures f8 check. King to d7 and after queen to e8 check, 
king to c7 you simply lose with queen captures g6 and now there is no back rank checkmates because if you play queen to e1 rook captures e1 is once again a winning position for white thank you for watching the video till the end friends i will be visiting you with more chess videos on opening chess traps puzzles in game strategies very soon so subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future updates thank you and have a great day friends